Hello and welcome to Tech with Jaspal. Are you a developer looking to skyrocket your productivity? Let's explore how GitHub Copilot, your AI-powered programming assistant, can help you achieve this. I have been using Copilot for the past few months and it's significantly boosted my productivity. Folks, this video is divided into two sections. In the first section, we will focus on how Copilot can help you work more efficiently with existing code written by others. As we all know, modifying and enhancing existing code can be more time consuming than writing new code from scratch. And in the second part of the video, I'll demonstrate how Copilot can increase your productivity when you are writing code from scratch. So without further ado, let's dive into it. So friends, in the first part of the video where we are going to look at how you can use GitHub Copilot to increase your productivity while working on a code written by someone else, we are going to use a small project which is utilizing GitHub Actions to build and publish a Docker image to Docker Hub. Uh, the Docker image is nothing but a Python web server. Which uh, this is a very small project, uh, but obviously in the real time experience, in the real time scenarios, you might have very big projects. So when you are using Copilot to uh, to work with those big projects, uh, the 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 time for uh, which Copilot takes to respond to your queries will obviously be a bit more. So the first thing that I would like to show you is uh, when you install GitHub Copilot, you also get GitHub Copilot chat with it. Okay, um, so we will we will make use of both github copilot chat and the inline suggestions as well during the course of this video so the first thing i would like to show you is for example you are working with a code which doesn't have any commenting in it and you are not really sure what is going on in the code so what you can do is in this case you can utilize github copilot and how you can utilize it select the code block that you want uh, the GitHub Copilot to explain it to you and then right click on it. And then in the Visual Studio code, you get an integrated option of Copilot. What you need to do is you need to go to the sub menus of the Copilot and write explain this. Now it will open a chat window where it's going to show you the references that it is using and it will explain the whole code base that you have selected. Now here you can see it is auto generating everything. Uh, so let it generate and then we will go through it. Uh, and you can clearly see here the selected Python code is a simple implementation of a web server. And this is what exactly I told you at the start of the video. First, it imports two modules, HTTP.server and socket server. This is going through all the lines of your code and telling you what exactly each line is doing. Now, friends, uh, obviously uh, this is uh, AI programmer, so it can be wrong. So it should always be your responsibility to verify what it's telling you before blindly believing it. But it will give you a lot of idea around what is going in your code. That is the first part. You can use it to explain what is written in your code. This comes handy when you are dealing with a, a code which was written by someone else. Now, as you can see, this code really doesn't have any commenting. And if you want to add comments to this code, what you need to do is again, select the code block where you want to add comments, right click, go to copilot and say generate docs. So it will generate some comments for you. Basically docs are the comments. Now see it has generated a few comments and then it tells you whether you want to accept it or discard it based on whether you think the documentation that it has generated is right or wrong. So I'll accept it for now. And you can see it has now added a comment here. It says this script starts a simple web server using the HTTP protocol. It serves file from the current directory, which is exactly what it is doing. That's one of the main advantage again, because you, uh, for example, you can use this feature when you are working on writing some new code as well. Uh, and you want the code to have good commenting so that someone who works on the on that code in future understands it easily. That's where you can use this part. Now let's introduce a error in the code and see whether Copilot can fix it or not. So for example, I'll remove this and again, I'll select the whole code and ask it to fix this because there is the option to fix this as well. So let's see if it can fix the code as well. So here you can see uh, to fix the code, I would correct the typo in the import statement and assign the correct class name to the handler variable. As you can see, I just made that 
mistake intentionally and it is smart enough to catch it. Again, you can either accept it or you can discard it. So I'll go ahead and accept it. And the code is now fixed. Now the fourth use case that you can use here is if you want to write test cases for your code, that's the fourth option, generate tests. Select the code for which you want to test write test cases and click generate tests. It is going to generate tests as well. If you click accept, it will open a new file and it will ask you to save. That's how you generate test cases using GitHub Copilot. Now friends, this is uh, all being done when you are using a file for your project. For example, you want it to tell you the context of the whole project in some words. So what you will do is you'll go to the Copilot chat and then you will type workspace and then you will ask it a question. Can you please explain the context of this project? Let's see how it comes back. So it is deciding which workspace information is collected first. Then it is obviously it has finished collecting the workspace information and then it is filtering it. So says this project, let's, let's wait for it to generate it as obviously the screen is moving and now it is generated. Let's read through it. This project appears to be a simple Python web server that serves files from the current working directory. The server is implemented in the web server.py file. It uses the http.server and socket modules from Python standard library to create a TCP server that listens on port 8815. This project also includes a Docker file, which suggests that the web server is designed to run inside a Docker container. That's where the context is coming from. The Docker file would contain the instructions to build this Docker image. Now this project uses GitHub Actions for continuous integration, continuous deployment. The Docker image.yaml workflow is triggered when a new tag starting with V is pushed to the repository. This workflow builds a Docker image of the web server and pushes it to Docker Hub. Now it's also telling you about the readme file. The readme file, which is there in my project, provides information on how to generate a Docker access token and how to configure the GitHub secrets, which are used by the GitHub Actions workflow. This has pretty much summed up what is happening in the whole project. So it's it has conveniently done that for you. And that's exactly what is happening in this whole project. You can see there is a readme file. In the readme file, obviously, I have uh, documented that the prerequisites are to generate a Docker, Docker access token, configure the GitHub secrets. That's what it was telling you. Then in the Docker file, you can see there are pretty much simple steps to use the Ubuntu latest version and then install the Python package and create the directory and copy the files that we are using when the uh, web server gets provisioned. So folks, that's how you can use GitHub Copilot to increase your productivity when you're working with the existing code. Now let's understand how you can use it to increase your productivity when you are working on something from scratch. So folks, uh, you already saw that there is a GitHub Copilot chat option which you can utilize. Uh, so if you want to utilize GitHub Copilot chat, uh, then it is almost similar to using chat GPT, but it is integrated in your Visual Studio code. You do have option to use GitHub Copilot with other IDs as well. If you are using other IDs, then the options are pretty much similar. It's just that the interface will be different. So the first thing that we would like to do here is let's ask Copilot to, uh, so for example, I am a, I, I am someone who wants to uh, write a chef recipe to uh, create a Azure storage account. So how I'll ask GitHub Copilot to write that recipe for me. I'll pretty much go into the Copilot chat. I'll, I'll ask it, write, a chef recipe for me to create a Azure storage account. So this will generate a recipe for you. Obviously, uh, it is it is going to uh, generate a code based on its understanding. It might be different than uh, your scenario. Uh, obviously, there are multiple ways on how you can authenticate with Azure and those sort of things. So uh, it is going to come up with a generic 
code that you can work upon so what my recommendation is instead of using uh using copilot chat to build uh build the whole code for you rather you should use its inline feature as that's more intelligent uh and it will give you suggestions based on the code you have written in the recipe rather than giving you a set of uh generic code that you can use to create a Azure storage account. So friends, now I'm into the default recipe of my cookbook that I created. It is a blank cookbook at the moment. The only thing is uh, it is using the standard naming convention of storage account. So um, the reason why I have named it as a storage account so that it gives Copilot a bit of idea around what I'm working with. So it can give me relevant suggestions even before I have written anything. So how it works here is uh, suppose you uh, start writing, uh, for example, I write require and you can see it has already started giving me suggestions that uh, uh, you might be requiring uh, AGR management storage here. Now it gives me any op an option to whether accept it. And if I click accept, and then if I hit, hit enter, it will start suggest suggest suggesting me more next steps, basically. See, it has given me a comment saying that uh, create a storage account. Now here you can see it says one slash two so basically it is giving you two options either you choose the first option which is create a storage account or the next one is define the variables obviously once you have uh, defined which provider you need to use after that you do have options either you start commenting things on what you are going to do next in your uh, recipe then otherwise you can start declaring your variables so let's uh, click uh, except for defining the variables and now hit enter. So see, it has now given me next suggestion that uh, your subscription ID and then you put your subscription ID here. If I click accept again, it has added it. So this way, uh, because when, when you were using a uh, co-pilot chat to uh, generate a recipe for you, it, it generated a, uh, a standard template for you, which might suit your requirements and might not suit your requirements. So the preferred option is to use inline suggestions while you are writing the code. So it has given me subscription ID. I go next and it tells me what is your resource group. Again, you can see it is smart enough to tell you what are the objects, what are the components that you need when you are trying to create a resource group or a storage account or whatever you are working with. And it pretty much keeps you suggesting things. Uh, you can see uh, it has again provided me the storage account name and you select your storage account. Now uh, it is giving you, again, it is giving you generic syntax. Obviously you need to replace your subscription ID with the subscription ID that you have in your, again, resource group needs to be replaced, but it has given you a structure to work with. And that's where it increases your productivity because uh, we all are humans and we don't really, uh, remember the whole structure on how to create a storage account or or anything we always refer to documentation i'm not saying you should not refer to documentation now because obviously chat gpt or copilot can make mistakes you should always review the, what suggestions they have given you and whatever it is suggesting now it is recommended to go to azure documentation and see whether those are up to date suggestions and not so friends, that's how you can use it to uh, to increase your productivity while you are writing something from scratch. All right, friends, that's it for this video. I hope my experience with GitHub Copilot helps boost your productivity. Do not hesitate to leave comments on the video about what you would like to see next related to DevOps and cloud computing. See you in the next video.